this is Andy Pearl of ID Boxing. I'm joined by the British super lightweight champion Dalton Smith over Zoom. Dalton, how are you? How did you find Christmas? Um, good. I'm all good, thank you. And, and um, enjoy Christmas. How about yourself? Uh, it was good, mate. Just some some nice time around with the family, and it was obviously an exciting time for you because you finally made your decision. You penned a new multi fight deal with Matchroom Boxing and therefore Eddie Hearn and the Zone. Dalton straight into it. Why? Why Matchroom? Dalton? Uh, why Matchroom and and the Zone and Eddie ahead of you know Sky and Boxer? Um, you know, I think when we sat down with my team, um. You know, an STM management, my dad. Um, you know, we just thought that was the right decision. Um, you know what was on the table at the time. So, and obviously, I'd been with Eddie from the start, so it just just makes sense. You know, that's that's where I've been from the start, and you know, it's it is it's nothing new new for me. What was the defining factor for you, Dalton? Because it, at one point it seemed very much so as if it was a fifty fifty way for you to go. Yeah, you know, it was 50-50. It was just that, you know, when we sat as a team, you know, matchroom was the right decision. Um, you know, there was there was no reason why I weren't with Sky because I weren't I was unhappy with stuff. But um, you know, we just we, we just thought Eddie was the right decision. What in particular about kind of what Eddie had to say then made you sway towards re-signing with them? Um, I just think more because I've been there from the start and um, it's not, you know, we've never we've never been unhappy or anything. So you know, it, it just made sense. Um, but to be honest, I just, I just kept out with it all. I left it to show to my dad, and I stay out of that side of it. <laughs> I'm not good with business, the business side. <laughs> uh, um, Dalton, obviously, there was a lot of excitement around you when you became a, a free agent, as it were. Uh, what? How did you leave things with with Ben and Sky and Boxer? Yeah, you know these. You know, it's all love there with Sky because, you know, I, I was with Sky when I first started my career with Edda. Um, you know, they showed nothing but love and support to me for, you know, since I've been professional. So, you know, these I've got a lot of time for the people at Sky. Um, you know, they've always treated me, treated me good, treated me well and and the, and the good, genuine people there. So, you know, there's no, there's no bad blood or anything. It's, you know, it's just boxing, it's business and we have to do what's best and make the right decisions for us. Dalton, just obviously when we had the uh, the PR release come through uh, from Matchroom about your deal, just trying to read between the lines a bit, he mentions it's a multi-fight deal and you'll be boxing on the platform within 2023. W would that suggest that however long this deal is, it might only be, say, two or three fights a game this year before you, you need to reevaluate kind of where you are then if, in terms of you might be the end of your contract again going into 2024? Yeah, so it's you know a couple of fights. It's not not like a fight five year deal. Um, you know a couple of fights, and you know, and then we'll see where we're at. But you know, I'm just excited to start the year, get you know, start pick up where I left off, and and you know, I'll just keep pushing on towards those those big tiles. So with that in mind, then Dalton, come the end of next year, you'll be effectively in another bidding war. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> could be. <laughs> Uh, just looking at what could be next for you then, I'm sure you know, they all offered you proposals as to how they wanted to guide your career. What was the proposal that Eddie offered you uh, going into next year? How does he see your 2023 playing out? Um, you know, starting off, you know, I think we'll go into, you know, we want the, I, I want the British for keeps. Um, I want that outright. So, you know, maybe get two two quick defences in, get the British and then, and then see where we go after that. Maybe, a, you know, Commonwealth, European. Um, you know, we'll see we'll see where things are at. I believe, unless I'm mistaken, Sam Maxwell still holds the Commonwealth. Is he still hold the Commonwealth? I, I think so. Am I, am, I, am I correct in saying that? Yeah, I think Sam had it last time I checked. I'm, I'm not sure now, but um, but yeah, I think I think Sam's still got that. I mean, just looking at your potential options at 140 domestically, you've got the likes of... Uh, Robbie Davis Jr., to be fair, but from what reports are saying, he might be facing Liam Parrow early next year. As you mentioned, Sam Maxwell, um, Akeem Ennis Brown, somebody you've been uh, spoken about facing previously. Who in particular would you like to go on to fight to win that title outright against? You know, whoever, whoever's in the way, do you know what I mean? It's, um, you know, whatever path I want to go, whoever's in the way, that's, that's who I want to fight. So, you know, there's, there's plenty of options there for me. Um, you know, domestically, the 140 divisions, you know, it's stacked. So there's, there's plenty of fights there.
Um, so yeah, I just want to get. I want to get that British first, and then and then we'll move on. I'm quite confident, Dalton, that this deal was heavily dependent on you being able to do that, and also looking towards your move to that world scene, looking to become a world champion yourself. It's a, an incredibly stacked division, as you know, Dalton, especially with some of those one three five guys looking to move up now and who have moved up. Um, talk to me about that and the promise that Eddie's given you that he will take you to Hillsborough to fight there. Yeah, Ed, you know, Eddie said we, we won those big nights in Hillsborough, but, you know, it's, to me, I've got to keep winning and, improve, and, and showing what I'm about, so... You know, as long as I'm performing, um, you know, I'm sure Eddie's going to deliver. So, you know, as long as I keep working hard, those big nights at Hillsborough, you know, 18 months away, um, you know, that's the way I see it. Sheffield had one big star in Carl Brook, who's still obviously kind of flirting with whether he will fully retire or not. Dalton, you're this next gen coming through, you're unbeaten, a lot of excitement around you. Are you confident you can be the man to bring back those big nights or keep those big nights rather coming back to Sheffield? Yeah, definitely. Sheffield's, you know, they've produced some big, big names in boxing over the years. And, you know, the most recent, um, Kel Brook. And, you know, for me, I want to keep that, you know, that them sh the big names of Sheffield, I want to keep that, you know, that legacy going. So, you know, I believe I'll be the, you know, the next star to come out with Sheffield. Kel Brook's nemesis uh, throughout his time was a certain Mr. Amir Khan. One name that you've been linked with, I wouldn't say he's a nemesis, you actually quite have quite a good friendly relationship, shall we say, is Mr. Adam Azim. Um, you've been asked about it a lot. I'm not going to ask you when you expect to cross paths, but when you spoke with Sky or Boxer, was that fight mentioned to you? Were they saying, listen, at some point you two will come and fight against each other and that could sell out a stadium down the line? Yeah, obviously there's, there's always mentions there, but, you know, the fight's a million miles away and, you know, as long as I keep doing well, Adam does well, he's, you know, that's... There's no reason it can't be a big fight. And especially as a fighter, you need those dancing partners. And he's the likes of uh, Brooke and Khan. Um, you know, that, that they make the you know the big domestic fight. So, you know, as long as we keep doing well, um, you know, there's no reason that that won't be a big fight down the line. How much I know I've asked you about it before, but just for four other domestic rivalry, such as that for yourself, Dalton, as you mentioned, Khan Brook, how much does that whet your own appetite to potentially have something like that uh, for yourself? Yeah, it's good because, you know, you need, like I say, you need them dancing partners and they're the, you know, the fights, what the British public remember you for, you know, the the, the big fights, the ones with the rivalries, the build-ups, you know, that's what people want to see. So it's the entertainment business, that, that's what catches eyes. It does indeed. And just before I let you go, Dalton, just kind of looking at the, the division itself and some fights coming up, uh, Liam Parra, Robbie Davis Jr., as I mentioned, rumours of that fight taking place next year. What are your thoughts on it? Um, you know, I think I think it's a good fight, um, especially for Robbie as well. Um, I know he, he had a bit of an inactive year this year. Um, you know, I, I like Robbie, and you know, it'd be, it'd be good to see him. You know, get one of them big fights, and obviously Paro put a great performance in against Brock um, Jarvis. So yeah, I think you know he's he's broke through and you know beat a good kid there. So it's you know it's it's got a recipe to be a good fight. And of course, one fight I'm sure you'll be keeping an especially keen eye on when it does have its official date announced. Taylor Catterall 2. Dalton, we, uh, I think many people or most people felt that maybe Jack had done enough to win that first fight. Heading into a rematch, for what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I thought Catterall won the first fight as well. And, you know, it's good that they're able to get it back on. Um, and then, you know, I've, I've been asked it before and I always think... You know, the, the weight, I think Josh has proven he's out, outgrowing the weight a little bit and he's only going to get bigger, not smaller. So, you know, the weight's always going to be a, a big factor for Josh. So, you know, I think we'll we'll see how, you know, how he looks on the scales for the next fight. But I think it'll be a completely different fight. You know, they'll be, they'll, they're both going to come in better fighters, better prepared. Um, and, yeah, it's going to be a great fight. I know it's difficult to say because you're not in his position, but before heading back up to Scotland, Dalton, if that was you and you had a controversial loss on your record and you had the chance to right that wrong in an immediate rematch, despite the, the gap between the two fights, would you be happy about having to go back to where that decision took place? Yeah, I think he's, he's going to have to because Josh is the champion. Um, you know, the champion dictates 
dictates the most in a, a fight. So, you know, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where it is. As long as you've got three fair judges, that's all that matters. It shouldn't matter where you're fighting, where it's on the moon. To, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's at the end of the day, you should have three fair judges and the right winner should win. Uh, Dalton, you've also got Regis Progre, who recently picked up that WBC title. We saw Jose Ramirez turn down the fight due to the, the purse split. On that note, it seems like TV Ma Lopez is next in line. If I do dance next, who comes out on top? I think uh, Progress is probably the, one of the strongest at the weight at the minute, um, especially with his last performances. Um, you know, I've always rated him, you know, technically and you know, he very, looks very powerful as well. So, you know, I think um, progress, you know, I, I do think he's probably one of the best of the crop with the 140 division. Dalton, I know you're on your own journey and your own path, but as we mentioned, so many uh, like, talented fighters in that division, uh, of course, at some point, they're all going to maybe look to move up. Josh has been at 140 for a while now, Regis Progress as well. We have those 135 ones moving up, but for yourself, are you, are you kind of desperate or keen to be able to get to the top of a division as quickly as possible so you can challenge these guys and share a ring with them before maybe time gets on a little too bit too bit much or too much sorry yeah i mean i mean i mean no rush because i'm only i'm only 25 so but i think the next 18 months for me you know you'll see you'll see me pushing on to that you know the, the to, to the you know the biggest stage towards the you know world title eliminators whatnot so you know, as long as I work hard for these 18 months, well, obviously I work hard to the end of my career, but I think the next 18 months for me will be, you know, the breakthrough to, to push on to the big scene. And Dalton, you also got um, Mr. Sonny Edwards in camp waiting for a big fight himself next year. A lot of talk about the potential Bam Rodriguez fight. It's one which every boxing fan would love to see. Just get your thoughts on it. I know you're going to back Sonny and we know how talented Sonny is, but how difficult of a fight would the Bam Rodriguez one be if it was to be next? Yeah, I think it's a great fight, and um, you know, two young, both young fighters. I think they're the two two best in the division at the minute. So, um, you know, I think the Martinez fight for Sonny is probably the easier one. You know, even though the, the people weren't saying it before, I think they're really realizing now. You know what Sonny would probably would do to Martinez. So, um, you know, I think the bam the bam fight is definitely an harder fight for Sonny. But to be honest, I. I Obviously, I'm going to be biased. I'm in his gym, but I, I don't see anybody beating Sonny in his, his weight. And one final one before I let you go, Dalton. Coming up in January 1st, big show of the boxing schedule in the UK, Eubank Junior Smith. One which got everybody talking. Your thoughts? Yeah, not, not the great fight. And, you know, we was actually just speaking about that in the gym today. And I've done, there's something about Smith. I've always liked Smith. Um, you know, he's always. I don't know, it's just something about him. And I think style-wise, he, he, he'll he come out on top against Eubank. Um, and obviously, obviously Eubank's a great fighter. And especially when in the Williams fight, he didn't, have, he didn't seem to have his right hand. So if he comes in fully fit, both hands are good. Um, you know, Maybe it could be different, but I, I'm favouriting Liam, Liam in that fight. Right, uh, Dalton, we will leave it there and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your day and get ready to for uh, an active and another big year for yourself. Just final word from you. Anything you'd like to leave on? No, no, thanks for your time and I look forward to a big 2023. No, it's always a pleasure, Dalton. Enjoy the rest of this year and, of course, New Year's. Have you got much planned for it? No, no, back in the gym now, so <laughs> the parties are off the cards. <laughs> It's all right, mate. You've got to, you keep looking over your shoulder, so I'm assuming your dad's watching you. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not here today. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Listen, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Yes, yeah, I'll talk, man.